Nikon have announced firmware version 2 for the Nikon ZF and it adds lots of new features that we've not seen in the ZF before. I'm going to run through some of those new features and tell you how to get the best out of them. So what's been added in firmware version 2? Well, the big one is Nikon Imaging Cloud. The Nikon ZF is now fully supported with a Nikon Imaging Cloud. This means a couple of things. First of all, you can directly upload from your ZF to the Nikon Imaging Cloud as long as your ZF is connected to Wi-Fi. This is a great way of backing your images up from your memory card without the need to put the card in a card reader or connect to a computer. Nikon Imaging Cloud will store those images for free for up to 30 days, but you can also set up an easy to use image transfer system that can transfer those images automatically from Nikon Imaging Cloud to your own own cloud system, whether that's something like Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, and so on. Nikon Imaging Cloud also gives you access to imaging recipes, and these are incredibly useful for the ZF because they allow you to be more creative with your photography and create a different style. Whether you want to create your own or download those from other photographers, the Imaging Cloud will let you do that and save them directly to your camera. The final really useful feature of the Imaging Cloud is it will let you automatically update your firmware when there's a new firmware update applied. Now obviously you'd have to make sure that your ZF is updated to firmware version 2 first of all and you've registered to the cloud system but any further firmware updates to the ZF can be done automatically just by using the imaging cloud once you've done that setup process. Along with the Nikon imaging cloud firmware version 2 also brings with it high-res zoom. High-res zoom is a feature that we've seen in previous Nikon Z series cameras but it's a first for the ZF. High-res zoom can allow you to double your focal length, effectively applying a two times zoom to the video. You can choose how quickly or how slowly it zooms in and out, and that two times zoom does not affect your image quality. High-res zoom can be applied when you're recording in Full HD. Firmware version 2 also brings a new subject detection option. The ZF has always been able to detect birds, but previously it's done this by using the animal detection option. Now, next to that, you'll find a new option for birds specifically. This is gonna be really useful for those of you that are using your ZF for bird photography. And it's gonna be much better in a couple of different scenarios. If you're dealing with smaller or different shaped birds, it's gonna be easier to focus on them. Or if you're in a situation with birds that are moving very quickly, or even against a busy background, the autofocus is gonna respond much faster and make sure that they are in focus more of the time. So if you've been using your ZF for wildlife and photographing birds, this new bird detection option is definitely gonna be incredibly useful for you. The Nikon ZF is already a fantastic camera to use with manual focus lenses, but with firmware version two, there's a range of new features that makes using manual focus lenses even easier. The first of those adjustments for manual focusing lenses is the live view display zoom. So previously on the ZF you could zoom in up to 200%, now you can zoom in up to 400%. That extra zoom is just going to make it so much easier to confirm that your focus is dead on and it's going to be so much easier for those of you that use manual focus lenses for things like macro, landscapes and detailed scenes and you just want to make sure you're focused in the exact spot you want. Alongside that display zoom, you now have a new way to cancel that zoom. So previously you either had to zoom in or zoom out or take a picture to cancel that zoom. Now you can just half press the shutter to cancel that zoom in action. So you can quickly go from the zoomed in view where you've manual focused to then go back out to your main composition to make sure you're happy with the shot. There's also been major improvements to non-CPU lens data. Previously, you were always limited to a particular focal length or a maximum aperture based on what Nikon had entered into the camera for you. Now, you can freely enter any focal length and any maximum aperture of your choice. And you can also name each individual lens. Previously, you had to remember what lens you'd assigned to number slot one, two, three, and so on. But now you can name each slot in accordance with the lens that you've assigned to that non-CPU lens data slot. A particular favorite setting of mine is exposure delay mode. Exposure delay mode has been added to other Nikon Z series cameras in the past, but now we have it in the new firmware version two on the ZF. Exposure delay mode allows you to build in a short delay of half a second, one second, two seconds, or three seconds, and that delay is built in after you press the shutter button. It means that you don't have to rely on a remote, and it is a really easy way of getting rid of camera shake when using your camera on a tripod and using a slow shutter speed. The next new addition is going to be really interesting for those of you that like to customize the way that you shoot with your ZF. 
You can now add ISO and exposure compensation directly to the command dials. This means that you don't have to rely on the dedicated dial on the top of the camera and you don't have to rely on the option in the menu system either. This is a much easier way of just using the front or the rear command dial to control either ISO or exposure compensation. Just be aware this setting is only going to apply when you're using your camera manually. All of these new features in firmware version 2 are going to make the ZF an even better camera to use and I for one am really excited to get out and start taking more pictures with my Nikon ZF.